Welcome one and all to Last Stop Penn Station podcast featuring Carrie Silken and Ian Riccoboni. They dive deep into Carrie's wealth of stories and no subject is off limits. From the world of wrestling to his ticket agency, growing up in New Jersey, drug-fueled underground days, hustling in the French Quarter of New Orleans, and endless days and nights in New York City, every story is worth telling. Welcome to another exciting edition of Last Stop Penn Station. Ian Riccoboni, Carrie Silken. Carrie, I'm in the bubble, but I'm out of the bubble uh, through the magic of <laughs> tape recording and, and current technology. We normally record on Tuesday evenings. It is Friday morning if you're listening to this. So I'm out of the bubble, but I was in the bubble. And uh, let's just assume it went great. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it did. Uh more exciting Ring of Honor action in the can. Absolutely. And we're coming off a great television title match between Ray Oris and Dragon Lee. You, you got to check that out. Continue to be impressed by Rhett Titus. Dragon Lee came up to the broadcast position following his victory. And uh, he said he was the best and kind of laid out an open challenge. So we'll see where that goes. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, watching some of these matches because I did a podcast the other day. Uh, what is it? Voices of Wrestling? Anyway, uh, nice guys. Um, and they were talking about Final Battle. And I told them, you might not believe this, but when I watched Final Battle, uh, I didn't. Oh, I know who it was. I was talking with the Ringsider guys. Mm-hmm. Which you, you spoke to two yeah. good guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jamie and Callum. Hey, Callum, yeah. I hesitated to say his name because it was the first <laughs> time I've ever seen that name before. Very but cool. uh, I told them... I, I didn't know it was more fun to watch it like that. Mm-hmm. Why do I want to know the results? Just and as you were uh, talking to them about sometimes at the shows, uh, you just like calling it as you see it. Yeah, I like to have column A and column B, and uh, whatever happens, I pick from the column that's necessary, and so that makes it makes me more into it. That's Jim Ross's style too. Some of the other, some of our other colleagues are a little different. I won't name names who prefers what, but I know Jim Ross is on the side of calling the action and and uh as it happens let's just say how was your birthday oh it's wonderful good old fudgy the whale made an appearance cool. uh, yeah instead of cookie puss fudgy the whale was there and uh i moved back to cheat day i've been uh, losing some weight again and the cheat day is usually on thursday I'll rub it in. <laughs> but uh, i moved it back from thursday to wednesday and we had a good time and ah, uh, you gotta honor yourself I, it's your I, birthday. I get down on january the 13th but uh, it was a good time my wife it was incredibly thoughtful I uh, got me something. She had to give me a picture of it. The post office is so delayed right now. I know. I have a couple of posters. That I uh, And the guy's one of these reliable guys. Yeah, same with my packages and uh, Sarah's. And It's almost been a month, and it's still in transit. It's amazing. It's in the Lehigh Valley. Yes. I got a notification. Uh, there's a great eBay seller named Bud Carson, yes. who, has, who has hosted both Carrie and myself at various points at his former in-store location. And I ordered some amazing Allentown Ag Hall programs that are signed. So Bob Backlund, Cowboy Bob Orton, uh, there's a Pedro Morales one. There's all kinds of, he's got great bargains. And you know the real, because he's had these guys in the store. He's had them in the store. So I trust, I've known Bud for over 20 years, 25 years. I trust him with that to a T. They come with a certificate. But Bud also lives in the 18103 zip code. I live in the 18103 zip code. Bud dropped them off at the post office. The same post office that would send them on a truck to my house. The same <laughs> that is in downtown Maybe they went to Nashville like FedEx. They, well, here's what happened. They went on a plane. They sat in the post office for 10 days. 10 days. Then they were sent on a plane to Chicago. <laughs> they came from Chicago to Philadelphia they took a, a, a mail truck from Philadelphia to the Lehigh Valley. They're back at the post office that they started at. And now uh, they're, they're still at the post office, according to the website. Well, my posters came from Portland, Oregon. And uh, it took, they finally arrived in Lehigh Valley. Uh, I believe it was on 
of like January 9th. And, uh, you know, we're recording this a little early, but uh, they're due any moment. Yeah, I they won't get political. I hope the post office gets all the help they need. It was working fine until yeah, this summer. That's right. It was working real good until this summer. That. And uh, I was mailing things. I was selling my micro brawlers autograph. People were getting them on the, within a day or two. It was incredible. And uh, now it's not like that anymore. So please fix the post office. Give them what they need. Give them the money. Give them the machines back. Give them the computers back. Whatever you took away, just put that back because it was working. It was great. Well, hopefully everyone will get their mail and hopefully... Uh, Hopefully Everybody. it's on Newman's truck. <laughs> remember that? that yeah. <laughs> Shit, when I was a kid, I remember it was Pete the Mailman. There you go. Uh, he'd come down the street. Hey, Phil. What's up, Pete? You know, you, yeah. knew, you knew your own mailman. Yeah. Uh, things were simpler. Yeah. No one knows anyone anymore. So mm. uh, that's the way it is. Um, I hope everyone's been enjoying the... Uh, Ring of Honor watch parties. Yeah. Uh, please tune in on Mondays. Uh, interact with the stars of Ring of Honor on Twitter. And uh, there's been some great matches, uh, as well as your brainchild, the 55 and 5. <laughs> yeah. Trugging along. Uh, we have... We've gone over some big names. We've gone over some not so big names. You had an easier week this time around, Carrie. It okay. was uh, it was a couple that you you were so aware I of. Think so. Uh, so I think <laughs> so. Uh, we it's a former NWA World Champion. We talked about and uh, a couple other names that were notable. A, a great Native American wrestler, Sonny Warcloud, that wrestled in Capital and, and in the WWF. So, uh, if you want to learn a little bit about a lot, go to fifty five and five dot com. That's where the YouTube playlist is. And uh, lead you right there. You can start at the beginning where we talked about Vern Gagne, or you can f learn something new. Learn about Steve McGill from Nebraska, who didn't have didn't have a decision in a match for a year. And we have to thank uh, AJ from Bassan Creative Web Design for yep. helping us with all this and getting this out for us. Amazing, great turnaround time. Exactly what we asked for, and. Uh, I know, uh, I know he loves doing it. <laughs> the finest in web design. <laughs> <laughs> but check him out, BassanCreative.com. And uh, that's been a lot of fun. We've had Tim Hornabaker check in. We've had Matt Farmer. We've had uh, the, the gentleman. Pat Lepard. Pat Lepard. We've had the gentleman from Toronto right. uh, check in. We've had uh, Maple Leaf Wrestling.com check in. And so this is getting a little bit of interest from the from the right people. I'm just hoping though that we can get some momentum. Not, I don't want to make money. I don't want. I don't want to get a hundred million views. I want a thousand more people to know who Steve McGill is. I want a thousand more people to know who Sunny Warcloud is. That's what we're looking to do. We're looking to bring some of these names. I, have you ever seen the uh, the Disney movie? And AJ, you might have to help me. I'm blanking on the name here. Uh, it came out. It was the Pixar film. And uh, I'm going to look that up. But the, the premise of the movie, and it was beautiful, it was that you... Notice, uh, uh, notice uh, that Coco. he didn't even try to <laughs> go to carry for Disney movie knowledge. But go ahead. It's okay. Coco. Coco. And, and the premise of the movie is if you stop talking about people, they, they're gone forever. And so by putting this out there... I'm hoping that Steve McGill, his family, has something to remember him by. Even if they never find the YouTube video, that somebody's continuing to talk about Steve McGill or whomever in and this that, set. And that's one of the, well, the premise of the podcast is Last Stop Penn Station about my experience. And we talk about pop culture and this and that. But it's mm -hmm. uh, like the one we did last week when we, uh, I thought for sure... You know, AJ keeps quiet when, while we're doing this, but uh, I thought for sure you guys would have come up with that it was around the same year. But, you know, I'm old, so I had more of a knowledge that, you know, uh, an album like uh, Led Zeppelin IV and uh, Aqualung and uh, Allman Brothers Live at the Film of East were all in 71. But uh, it's we're trying to pass this on to people. Mm -hmm. And even if... It's like I remember at the end of the great Red Skelton show, <laughs> right? Red Skelton. Yeah. He used to say, tonight, I hope you enjoyed the show. And even if I made 
one or two people laugh or smile, then I did my job. So we're trying to pass this, whether it's wrestling knowledge, whether it's musical knowledge, whether it's oddball characters like Mama Pretzel <laughs> and Silent Sydney or Freddy the Weeper or Ralph the Mummy or Baby Dumplings. <laughs> These are great stories that need to, uh, you know, just the people uh, need to be passed down from generation to generation. And uh, it'll keep their memory. It, keep, it keeps their memory alive. And it's once again, this is about characters, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we're, we're talking about people having within them to be a character, you know, like good old, uh, I'm just making it, you know, uh, good old uh, Uncle Bill, what a character <laughs> he was, right? My Uncle Doug, there's stories about Uncle Doug that I cannot tell on this podcast. <laughs> uh, I'll get, I'll get <laughs> well, there's a time in 1991, if you look at anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that one's on the internet, folks. You can find that one if you really know what to look for. But Carrie, speaking of knowing what to look for, speaking of keeping people and characters alive, the nice man. Yeah, the nice man. And boy, and he was a nice man. And I, we a few weeks ago, I took us on a, a drug, disgraceful drug tour of the Times Square area where hard drugs, you know, it, and I'm thinking about it now, like they didn't even bother with weed. Mm. You know, hard drugs were being sold wide open. Now, was that a shift in the 80s? Was weed kind oh, of Oh, it was a... still popular. Okay. And it was still around. But uh, the money was in the cocaine, mm. the crack, the... Uh, and is that because you could dilute it or is that because you could cut it? No, it was it? just in demand. Okay. It was, you know, it was an epidemic. Mm. It's funny. uh it's not funny. It's it's sick. 41st Street, you know, the Broadway theaters, the first one on a numerical street basis is the Needlelander where Rent played for oh, years, okay. yeah. which is on four. We've never been. I don't think we've been to that theater. The last time I went to that theater, I went with the great Prince Nana <laughs> to see. Uh, oh, it. Um, it was a, it was a it was a show about uh, Elvis, Jerry Lee, uh, Carl Perkins. Great Balls of Fire. No, it had a title mm. uh, that I will come up with, but uh, it was about this one session that they had. Ah, okay. And um, but anyway, it's on Forty First between Seventh and Eighth. So if you stepped out the Port Authority, mm -hmm. you could step out it. You could step out of it on Fortieth right. or Forty First. But if you moseyed to 41st Street in the 80s, there was like, you know, a, a few months ago in Portland they, or Seattle, they mm -hmm. had that like encampment free zone. Yeah, the free zone. And yeah. if you've ever seen The Wire there, mm -hmm. which I, I believe you said you didn't see. I haven't seen it. There, no, there's a thing where the Baltimore police just give the guys here. Here's three blocks. Sell what you want. Mm -hmm. Let the let the. Dope fiends go there. This way it keeps it out of other areas. Well, 41st Street was like, you can smoke crack there zone. Really? Yeah. Whoa. And this is with like thousands of people returning from a day's work, you know, wow. going back to get, catch their bus to yeah. Jersey or... Oakland, New Jersey. And right. to, like <laughs> and, and yeah, so it was insane. But so we, 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 I gave this tour and it dawned on me what goes hand in hand with this Times Square drug tour is when I learned about the after hours clubs. Hmm. And I first went to an after hours club... It might have been by accident. Hmm. Um, we were having some kind of bachelor party and it was in the village and the bars were closing and someone says, oh, don't you know about Club 82? We didn't know it was. Yeah. And we went to this place. It was like, we're talking here like the early 80s. So it was like 10 bucks to get in. And I, I quickly... These are my friends from Cranford, and I quickly realized what was going on. First of all, it was a this Club 82, which I was only at once. It was a 
uh, what would be the here? You're a sex educator. What sure. would be the word for like? It was wasn't a gay club. Yeah. It wasn't a straight club. It was. It wasn't a you know it, some like a you know like swingers. It kind of swingers, no, but no, no. It just just a, a like, hookup. It's just just no, yeah. it was just like any anything. Anything goes. There's no old part. It wasn't sex going on yeah. necessarily, but um, so I. It was a mixed bag, that's for sure. And was there any advertising? Like when you go to a, when you go to a bar, like there's usually a sign like Patty's Pub or a, a, no no signage. I, I believe it did have a sign, okay. but there was a guy at the door. Mm-hmm. You know, the right people had to be getting paid off, but that was like a one off. Okay. But as far as myself, um, someone turned me on to a place that was down in your old stopping grounds. It was on Third Avenue. Between like 14th and 15th oh, Street. I lived there. Or, I lived on 3rd and 12th. Well, yeah. this is before your time. Sure. That's and a Dwayne Reed now, by the way, what oh, you described. Yes. Well, there was this after hours club down there. And uh, this must have been like, this is before I was doing the tickets full time. Like, yeah, 83, 84. And uh, same thing. There was an admission and they, I knew something was going on when they pat you down. Oh. Right. Oh. Right. They don't. Hey, look. They don't want anyone getting robbed. Yeah. They don't want the wrong people. And the downstairs of this place looked like your normal tavern. And then they had an upstairs where people were using drugs. And mm. uh, I went there a few times. But once I was at the garden often, and once I was in Times Square a lot. That's when I got turned on to a few of these places. And and man, talk about rough and talk about dangerous. And we, we go once again. And it didn't dawn on me when we did the last thing. And I gave the, the whole spiel about 50th Street. Mm-hmm. And the gentleman that had the operation seven days a week, noon to midnight, that were there for years and years. Yeah. And I talked about Mickey, who was in the hotel with his lovely bride. Right. Right. And I had forgotten that on 50th Street, this is where I met Dustin. Oh. There was an after hours club. It was a talk about a hole in the wall. There was a flight of steps, and that flight of steps is still there. I want it, it, it's it's similar to when I told the story of me going for the first time with a female hooker with my friend Dale, and she, mm-hmm. now it's like an Armenian restaurant. It's like a flight of stairs <laughs> down. So this was a flight of stairs up on 50th between 7th and 8th, same block as that gay hustler bar, okay. same block as the Dominicans, uh, Gershwin Theater across the street, right. Winter Garden Theater uh, right, on, right on Broadway or 7th Avenue there. And the Full Moon Saloon was on 40, was, was 8th Avenue between 46th and 47th. So someone told me about this place. So you walked up the flight of stairs. I don't believe there was an admission. Mm. And it was a small bar and not much bigger than the pinball room. Yeah. And a jukebox. And there was a cocaine cellar. And that's where I met Dustin for the very first time. Wow. I saw this handsome young man. I'm like, this guy can't be, you know, because he, he, like, he, he looked like he was still 18 looks, or 19. And, still looks very young. Well, he, 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 but anyway, I met him. And the one memory of this club, and it's like, when Dustin and I eventually became friends, and this is when we were still using, in Blazin, and you're a one-hit wonder guy, yeah. emblazoned in my brain from that damn jukebox. You know, remember that horrible late 80s, maybe it came out in the mid-80s, I'm Stroking. <laughs> stroking Stroke It by Billy Squire? Yeah, no, no. Oh. It's, 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 a, it's a Stroke It to the East. Oh, yeah. Stroke It to the West. <laughs> And this thought, oh, this thing, what is it? 
It was like stuck. I've never done drugs, but that's the last song I wanted oh, to listen to. Oh, and it would always come on. <laughs> it was awful, awful. And one night I was in the club. Who's getting high to that? Who's coming down from that? Oh. <laughs> it's the worst song. Oh. <laughs> and so one night I'm in the club and I'm with whoever. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. What a bad song. And, you know, we're doing the cocaine all night. And you're leaving there. And this thing is like, it's like uh, they took a, a, a press yeah. and put it in your head. So one night I'm in that club. Might have been with Dustin. Might have not been. Whatever. And uh, there was a guy, Jimmy the Greek, who... I just knew from being around. And he was a, a larger seller. Um, you know, he wouldn't hang out in the bar and sell. But if you knew, if you knew him, you know, he sold quantity. And um, Jimmy the Greek was there. And he said to me, there was an extra back room. He goes, come in the back with me. Hmm. All right. He had like, I don't know, a couple of ounces of coke. It was a lot. Yeah. And he's just like, here. You know, like, this is rare. Right. <laughs> Someone just like, he must have gave me like a couple, you know, like, he goes, he goes, had ah, a good night here. What's the monetary value on that? A couple, oh, hundred, was, couple hundred? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was good shit. But anyway, what happened was, and he was still there, I see three uniform New York City police. Hmm. This place had no security. Yeah. It was a dangerous place. And they come in the door. And I see Jimmy go in the back with them. Whoa. One guy had the sergeants, the gold, whatever. And uh, I'm like, oh, shit, maybe we should leave or maybe we should just chill. Yeah. You know, the stuff is out on the table. Oh, Jesus. And these guys just walked in, walked to the back, and they walked back out. Oh, jeez. And, yeah, so 50th Street Place... It was too, you know, it was too small for any kind of comfort. Too much stroking, too. Oh, and too much stroking. Yeah. So we then discovered another place. Um, I wish I had the exact address because it doesn't fit in with this kind of vibe. It was like 58th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Hmm. And there was a guy who was, oh, he had a union job. He worked on the Enterprise, you know, the famous ship. Right. Um, and it was one of these no-show jobs. Mm. You know, yeah. Right? <laughs> so he had some union job. And one time, uh, Roger Waters had a party wow. on the ship. Um, he released something. And what the hell is this guy's name? Uh, Frank, I think, he said to me, you want to go over there? I'm like, sure. <laughs> Roger Waters was there. Oh, damn. And I went up to him. He was just sitting in a chair smoking a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And there were media people there. And he didn't want to be bothered with nothing. I just said, hey, I'm really a big fan. He's like, yeah, thanks. You know, mm -hmm. and so I'm, I'm with this guy, the union guy, and we're at this other club. And the thing about this club was, besides that it was in a better neighborhood, it had the flight of stairs going up. And then they checked you, you know, they, they patted you down. Yeah. There might have been a small admission. Mm -hmm. And then you had a bar. It was sort of big. And I remember the one thing that this club had that the other ones didn't. They had gambling. Really? Yeah. And that's that's a rarity. Yeah. In they the had the Joker the poker day. machines. Okay. And I think they had, you know, I wasn't interested. They had some blackjack action. Mm. And then they had an upstairs. And that's where the coke was being done. And I was there like two or three times. And one time we're upstairs and the lights, it's like, you know, we're talking like seven in the morning. Yeah. And the lights start flashing. Oh, that's going to be a sign. The, and it's like, they yell upstairs, cops are coming, cops are coming. Mm. So... What do you do? So the, the <laughs> cops came and they lined everyone up. And some people threw shit on the floor. 
Okay. And other people didn't. And the <laughs> cops sort of just made sure you didn't have a weapon. Yeah. And I even think the cops said, just put that shit in your pocket. Get out of here. Okay. The only people they messed with were the people that were working there. And the guy that was the union guy had this other friend who I had met once. He, um, he had had an accident at one point in his life. And he had lost his left arm. And he had one huh. of the, like the old school hook. Oh, okay, yeah. Right, on his left arm. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I could give you a ride. Like, where do you guys want to go? You know, and, and I remember the union guy goes, oh, all right, thanks a lot, Lefty. Oh. That was, that was his name. <laughs> so he took us. So to, mean. He, so, so mean. He, he went up there. He went, that was his name. So he took <laughs> us to get another hell hole. But the, the, the hell hole of the hell holes and it's portrayed, as we've referenced before, in the deuce. The 366, 8th Avenue, between 26th and 27th Street, I believe. And this was uh, two flights of stairs going up, small admission, patted you down, and it was like one big rumpus room. <laughs> Oh, wow. there, there was there was there was no sex stuff going on, mm. and you know there was there were there were straights, gays, hookers, pimps, uh, everything. But everyone yeah. was there just there to get high. Mm. And I remember a couple times, Ian, going there for the second night in a row. And I'm realizing, oh shit, I got the same, like it's the summertime. Yeah. I got the same damn t shirt on. <laughs> and I got, like, I would go to one of these newsstands, like, that's all night, you know, yeah. for $1.99, for I'm going to buy an I Love New York shirt. <laughs> well, I did that like once or twice. And then after I did it, I probably did it once, because after the first time I did it, I realized, the same people that were there the, the night before were there again, and they were wearing the same clothes. <laughs> oh my God. Right. So, wow. And one night I was in there. Boy, I don't want to call out a name. And, and, and there was a prominent New York Ranger mm. who uh, was trying to make it back on the team. Mm. And there was a three in the afternoon exhibition game, and it was like 10 in the morning. Oh, and God. I'm like, I'm like, dude, uh, don't you have a game? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll get there. But uh, the nice man. Yeah. I'm in the 366. And the crowd would start, as the money would dis 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 dissipate, the crowd would get thin. And, you know, guys, it started like four, five, six, seven in the morning. It was pump It was pumping, right? But eight, nine, and then guys would come up to you, hey, can you buy me a beer? Mm. And it, it was, so we were in, I was in the place and I was basically by myself. And it was way, you know, like, it's like the Billy Joel, uh, Big Shot song. Mm. You went over the line, you didn't see it was time to go home. So I'm in the club and there was this guy, I'm maybe 31. There was this guy. To me, he seemed older. Maybe he was in his late 40s. Like a, like a, uh, who's the guy uh, that we love on Ray Donovan? Who's the actor? Um, Liam, Liam Schreiber. Schreiber. Yeah, Liam Schreiber on Ray Donovan. Mm -hmm. uh, he was that kind of guy, but polite. He was wearing a sport coat, dress shirt, and I had done a little coke with him during the night. And uh, as as the night was, as it was thinning, and I didn't have the wear, I was a street guy, but I didn't know everything. And he comes up to me and he says, hey, uh, we should get out of here. So I thought, you know, he was making a, uh, a move on me, oh, you know, like, yeah. you know, and I just said, uh, I go, oh, I'm good, man. He goes, so we remain in the place. And now it's down to about, at its peak, there might've been 200 people. Wow. Now it's down to about 
you know, that adds peak, like seven in the morning. Sure. And when he first said that to me, there might have been 30 people. And now it's down to, it's getting into the teens. Mm -hmm. And he comes back up to me and he says, hey, listen, we really should get out of here. And I'm like, uh, I'm cool. Um, he goes, come here. And yeah, there's music playing. He's, and he says, listen, you and I are the only two people in here that have any money. Mm -hmm. And I looked around and I'm like, whoa. So I follow him out. Mm -hmm. And below the 366 was a regular, it was like noon. <laughs> Gary, what are you doing? Yeah, and you, it, it is the worst what? feeling of the world to walk out and the rest of New York City, is they're going to lunch. lunch. Yeah. And you see normal people and <laughs> nice looking women. It was summertime, right? And, yeah. it, it, and nice looking women. And, you know, here and we're creeping out of this place and... He knew he knew his stuff, and he we go down the block to a regular tavern, mm -hmm. and we go in there, and he's he he had introduced himself previously. We'll just we'll just call him uh, Eddie, mm -hmm. and uh, he so we go in the bar, and he goes, "Yeah, man." He goes, "I I didn't want to see you know you you're." He goes, you seem like a good guy. I just didn't want to see nothing happen. Um, I go, well, I appreciate it. I, I realized what you meant. So, like, we, we had a beer down there, and I was ready to part ways. And he says to me, um, I'm, I got a four, I have, like, a 4.30 flight. I'm staying. It was the same hotel where I met Sammy Stewart. Oh, okay. At the Grand Hyatt by, uh, uh, Grand Central Station. Mm -hmm. He says, I got a room at the Grand Hyatt and I've got it through the, like through the next day. Yeah. He goes, I'm just going to go back there and get cleaned up and uh, I got to get out of here. He goes, do you want the room? And I'm like, no, this guy's making a move, you know, and it wasn't my type necessarily. Uh, mm -hmm. But I just said, the guy's been so nice. I could handle myself. Mm-hmm. So we go to the Grand Hyatt, we go up to his room, and uh, he says, I'm gonna take a shower, just, just relax, relax, you know, everything's cool. So I'm nervously sitting there, you now expecting a guy probably to come out of the shower naked or something like <laughs> right. that, that kind of thing, and I'll deal with it from that point on. But uh, no, that didn't happen. He, wow. uh, he came out, uh, sort of, you know, in his shorts and t-shirt and mm -hmm. he uh, had his, you know, he had his valise with his new, his new set of clothes and he entrusted me, like I could have maybe grabbed something and ran when he sure. was in the shower and uh, he got dressed and uh, he gave me the key and he just said, uh, listen, um, just make yourself at home, do me a favor. Don't run up some room service bill, right. <laughs> some bar tab. And uh, I shook hands with him. And wow. uh, what a nice man. <laughs> That's in, the in a craziest. Den of thieves. Yeah. I, I got a lot of questions. <laughs> First of all, how long were you awake at that point? Oh, probably two, three days. Holy crap. That was my does MO. The, does the delirium sit in at that point? Yeah, you, I mean it's it's disgusting. <laughs> you're 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 high on the coke and you're drinking, yeah. but you're just yeah, it's, it's 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 lousy. But I was clear enough headed. Wow, uh, was at any point had you, had you found yourself in any kind of danger? I mean, it's it was there any any story like that that scared you off of those clubs, or was that the story that was like, yep, I'm done going to these these after hours clubs? Um. One time in the non after hours club, I, it was in near the garden, and uh, it had been after and after hours. The second one, there's not with the nice man. Mm -hmm. We're in this place, and this place sort of 
allowed, like the full moon allowed the cocaine use. Mm-hmm. And we, I go in there, this guy's like, yeah, come on, we'll go in the bathroom. I go in the bathroom and this guy's in the bathroom. He's got a it, it, it's hard to describe. He's got a knife out and he's just sort of like gyrating, <laughs> right? He's gyrating like, like a lot. And, and, and the guy says to me, oh, don't worry. That, that's Willie. It's, uh, and I go, it's Willie. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, it's, like, this is normal. And here's this guy with the thing. He goes, oh, oh my God. <laughs> so I wasn't too comfortable Holy with that. Holy crap. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I escaped yeah. Uh, luckily. Yeah, and uh, did you keep in contact? Did he give you a phone number? Did no, they, no, the nice man. Yeah. No. 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 I should have asked him. Uh, he didn't. Uh, but uh, he taught me a valuable lesson. I returned to the three sixty six. Okay. And I knew. Uh, yeah. When things were, when it was getting a little thin in there, and you know, get out of there. I, how do you think the the 360s, how do you think they kept safe? I mean, if there's, there's clearly people. Oh, yeah, you also, I forgot one. I, I, I'm interrupting your question, but yeah. I remember another, just remember another thing. If you went to the men's room, just if you had to take a leak. Yeah. Because you could do the, you could do the drugs wide open. <laughs> Jeez. So if you had to take a leak, it was a dollar. Really? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Cover, cover the plumbing bill. Right. <laughs> cover the New York City. Uh, you, I mean, they couldn't call the cops if something went out of hand. Was there somebody have a gun? Did somebody have said? You know, I'm sure there was yeah. someone watching out. Like that little 50th Street one that I mm-hmm. was talking about where I met Dustin. And the Full Moon, which was a legit bar. So small and it's just dangerous. Um, that 366, probably. Yeah. But uh, I wasn't mature enough to think about it at the time. Yeah. They're just... Uh, under wraps. Wow. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. I've gone, I think the most I've gone without sleeping is 19 hours at this point. <laughs> so that was the story of the nice man. Yeah. The, you, you know, you, you have to use instinct sometime. Yeah, right. You know, the worst thing that would have happened, well, the worst thing would have happened was we get, you know, we get fleeced at the club or robbed or hit over the head. Sure. Or, but the, the worst thing that happened going back to his uh, room was, you know, the guy hits on me and uh, I deal with it how I deal with it. Yeah. Or, or, or maybe have some fun. There you go. <laughs> Flip a coin, right? <laughs> Who knows? Right. But wow, I can't, can that, that might not even be able to happen today. I mean, that's something that's, that's one of a kind. Yeah. I mean... We talk about characters. Here's a character that showed character. Yeah. You know? I'm going to go get high and then get my know, hotel room and, and or something. He was and so out of, he was so out of his, out of that element. Sport coat, you said, everything. Jeez. Right. And, uh, hey, what about the New York Ranger player who was yeah. do at the garden to suit up and play? Oh, geez. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, and I'm sure there was... I'm sure you mentioned the word epidemic earlier. I mean, Len Bias is obviously the, the most famous story. He gets trapped in number two by the Celtics, passes away that the next morning or that night. Um, I, I can't even imagine what was going on. Like you said, just... Oh, there was a... In plain sight. What the, where are we at, AJ? Yeah, 37. Um... It was another club, real quick. Um, <laughs> on 33rd Street, which there was three bars. There was the Bantry, there was the Blarney, the regular bars, the Blarney Rock and McCann's. McCann's was the nicer one. The other two were taverns. Um, the Blarney Rock was a working man's bar. Uh, did I tell the story? They would cash checks. They used no. to have like... The Blarney Rock would have <laughs> anywhere from thirty to fifty thousand dollars cash money in there. Whoa! Why you would ask? Yeah. Because the union guys that were working in that Herald Square area. Mm-hmm. This is you know the classic, and you've been in the classic Blarney Rocks that have the steam table with the corn beef yeah. and the pastrami, mm-hmm. and you know when they if you order a shot of. Jack or Southern Comfort, yeah. you get up. <laughs> you know, you're getting three, four ounces. And this was so the guys would cash their checks. Uh, and they would, t- you know, it was protocol was uh, 
you cash in an eight hundred dollar check, you're tipping the bartender twenty bucks. Right. And a, and there were two the two day bartenders, Jimmy, who was. Cl- Irish stud. He was like a John <laughs> Wayne Irishman type. And the other guy at the other end of the bar, um, I think his name was Jack, but he talked like a he, these guys, like Jimmy was a 50 year old man and he looked, you know, he looked like a real man's man. Jack was like, like a, he, he talked like a pirate. <laughs> like, I, I, uh, he'd see me. He didn't. I, I would be friends. You know, the, when the night guys came, the whole scene changed. And uh, Jack would see me. Goes, I. I hear you and Patty are staying up all night. You fucks. You know? <laughs> but he had his own crowd, and uh, so I could go in there sometimes. The scalpers were banned from there, but I, I was like a good guy. I remember going up to Jimmy and saying, "Listen, can I get a couple hundred dollars?" And he'd just look at me like, "If, if you're borrowing it." You, you're paying me back, right? Yeah. And so he would be guys that would cash their checks um, on a Friday. Mm-hmm. On Monday, not me, I'm talking about these union guys. Mm-hmm. They were asking Jack and and Jimmy for, uh, hey, can I get 50 until the weekend? Oh, geez. Can I get... And these guys would do it because they would get you know, you could only flee some once. Right. It was like the diggers. Right. And they had stacks of money. Stacks. Wow. It was it was an it was a different world. Yeah. It was a, oh yeah, so the after hours. So in between these three places, <laughs> there was a shoe store. Hmm. And there was this guy, Dominic, whose father, this was on 33rd between 6th and 7th. The finest of Italian leather shoes, you know, had been there probably since the 40s. Dominic's father spoke Italian, you know, barely spoke English. Yeah. And Dominic was inheriting this. And Dominic and this other guy, uh, T shirt Frank, uh, T shirt Frank was a t shirt hustler and was in the ticket business. And Dominic wanted to get in the ticket business. And, uh, they ran tickets out of the store. Mm-hmm. And then Dominic, uh, who had business acumen, he wanted to open up his own after hours club. Oh. And he, he figured, ooh, the scalpers are going to go. The worst crowd possible. <laughs> the cheapest and one. And it was on 28th Street between 7th and 6th. And That's a funky was, location. Yeah. And there was never a lot of people in there. And it, it, it just didn't work. But... Um, I'm sure there was another couple that I went, oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> How can I forget? <laughs> oh, Rose's Saigon Lounge oh. on 43rd Street. When we were talking a couple, I think on last week's, uh, two weeks ago, when I was talking about uh, meeting that kindly pimp that took me to meet the the guys on 50th Street. Right. That's where Dave's bar was. Well, down the street was the notorious Hotel Carter. Mm. If you, to the, it's still there. Really? If you look on on uh, oh, what's the what's what's the uh, TripAdvisor? The, or, TripAdvisor yeah. or Yelp? Mm-hmm. It's like rats and roaches had to help me carry my <laughs> luggage, <laughs> or, or helped me carry my luggage. And I think I talked about this, but it's worth talking about again. They would have, a, a, people would check in, and as soon as they would like see the wife and the husband and the <laughs> kids leave, they'd be like, room 821, go. Oh, geez. And just rob them. You know, oh, rob them my here. God. Well, also in the Carter was the beautiful Rose's Saigon Lounge, mm. which in broad daylight didn't seem like too bad a place. Yeah. But when it got late, this place was sick. And, um, I was I was in there. Uh, it was convenient and it was always busy. And talk about a dangerous bathroom. Really? That, like, got if you just had to take a leak, mm-hmm. you you were you, you you were charged five dollars. Wow! As opposed to the mere one dollar, <laughs> because it was a five. Because everyone in the bathroom was smoking crack. Oh God! So you had to pay five dollar bounty to. Uh, 
have the privilege to, you know, you couldn't do it wide open. In oh, jeez. So, yeah. So that was another another uh, hell hole. Oh, God. But, uh, hey, uh, these kind of places were, st- oh, then there were, oh, the village. Yeah. Let's do the village as a whole separate entity. Because. Uh, oh, my goodness. Because I live down there. Remember that I, triangle? Yeah, I sure do. I, I've told you that's where I, that's the only place I ever got cat called. Ever in my life. Oh my yeah. God. What, what a scene that was. Yeah. I I'll will tell uh, about that on a future episode. That sounds good. I'll tell you about the uh the nice my nice man that complimented me on my on my Paisley jacket that I had on. Okay. So. And and remind me, I'll tell you about the kissing coke seller. Oh jeez. Wow, was it Morgana? Remember her? She the kissing the kissing bandit. She'd run out and kiss all the yeah, sure. yeah. So, Okay. Well, it sounds like we're gonna hear more about the West Village, the kissing yeah. coke bandit, <laughs> kissing coke seller, and and more on uh, an upcoming edition of Last Stop Penn Station. Carrie, thanks for telling us about the nice man this week. He was a nice man, and uh, I hope he's still around and he's healthy and. Uh, I wish I knew his name. He deserves a shout out. And also, last but before we leave you, please subscribe to Last Stop Penn Station. Please subscribe to 55 and 5. Please, uh, for all your web design needs, uh, Basan Creative, Eric, our friend from Discover Pro Wrestling, who helps us out. You could buy a Last Stop Penn Station, Penn Station t-shirt, say that three times fast, or a camel t-shirt. And we want to thank uh, Conrad Thompson for yeah. uh, integrating us with the 55 and 5 and the uh, poster of the week. Yeah, it, that's going to be uh, getting a lot of great comments on that already. And we're excited to do even more. So for Carrie, for AJ, for Ian, thanks so much for listening this week on Last Stop Penn Station. And we'll see you next week right here. Listening to Last Stop Penn Station Podcast. Great review, like, subscribe, and share on your favorite platform. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or at laststoppennstation.com.